Today we'll be making a mold of this cast that was made here in the Pacific Northwest um, not too long ago. And to make a copy of this cast so that if this cast gets broken or lost somehow, I'll have copies of it. Uh, the first thing you want to do is find a pan that you can put the cast into so you can make your mold. And what I've done here is I've taken um, a couple of rolls, like you see here, and put them under the edge to make the mold form fitting. So there's a small gap around the outside edge, but not a large one. The next thing I did was I covered it with Dawn dish soap. And this is my release agent so that the caulking, uh, the silicone caulking does not stick to it. And basically you put the soap on and then I like to go through the grooves with a paintbrush just to make sure that the, the small indentations uh, are not full of soap so that the silicone will bond down inside of them and we'll get a nice detailed cast out of it. So once the soap has all been thinned out over the top of the cast, the next step is I took pieces of the wet paper towel that I used to help me remove the excess soap and I broke off small pieces and I put them under the edge of the cast where it had large gaps and that's so that the silicone does not flow underneath the cast. It stays on the outer edge. Now this cast is relatively flat so I didn't have to do it in a lot of places but still necessary. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to break the old cast out later if it's not completely covered in silicone on both sides. The next step is to mix the naphtha with my silicone and I got both of these off of Amazon. They're relatively cheap and so basically my next step I'm going to be mixing these two together. I just want to thin the silicone down a little bit. You don't have to use a whole lot of naphtha. I just like to thin it a little bit. That way it spreads better. The same paintbrush that I used to uh, get down in the nooks and crannies here on the cast I'll be using to uh, disperse the silicone on the cast for the first layer. There will be probably at least three layers on this cast to get a nice mold out of it. I want it fairly thick so it doesn't just break apart when I pull it away from the cast and any future casts I use to make copies with. And uh, those are basically the two steps. I uh, will be finding some mesh or some kind of barrier to lay across after the first layer so that it adds a little bit of strength to the mold itself. And you'll see me adding that here in a bit. So step one, done. Step two, coming up. Okay, step two is I've moved the mold out to my garage because this naphtha and the silicone stink to high heaven. So I've taken this paintbrush and I mixed like a quarter cup or a half cup of naphtha with a tube of silicone and it makes it a little bit more pliable and so then I covered the cast with the silicone and I've taken cheesecloth as my mesh that I'll be putting into the mold to make it stronger so when I go to pull it out pull a cast out of it it's uh, not just going to fall apart on me and so I just wanted to stop real quick and show step two. Step three is going to be I'm going to put another layer right over the top of this one. I'll put a little bit more mesh on the back of the foot and then start my next layer of silicone. Okay, so now layer two is on and I put a little more cheesecloth on it. The cheesecloth, as thin as it looks, cannot be torn. Uh, you cannot tear it apart. It is really strong. So I'm reinforcing over the toes and I reinforce down by the heel a little bit. You don't need a whole lot of cheesecloth. Just one or two layers is fine. It's, this stuff's industrial. The mold is still wet and I keep mixing batches in my little Tupperware 
unit here with the brush that'll be a throwaway. I'm on my second pair of rubber gloves. This stuff's messy, so be prepared to, to make a mess. Uh, totally worth it though. You're gonna have a beautiful cast when you get done. So now I'm gonna mix batch number three, again, about a quarter cup of the naphtha and another uh, cylinder of the silicone caulk and I'll put that over the top of this mesh. I want to do it while everything is wet because I want it to absorb through the layers. I, I don't want any dry spots in that in that cheesecloth. So anyways, here we go. I'll start on layer three. Okay, so here we are. I put on the last layer. Each silicone container I considered a layer and uh, after the first one I put the cheesecloth down. After that I just kept making it thicker and thicker. The total thickness of this mold is probably uh, it, probably about a three quarters of an inch and the thinnest spots maybe a little thicker than that and across the mid tarsal break it's probably like an inch and a half or more and down in the toes the same thing. I wanted to make sure that it was nice and thick through those areas so that the uh, cast isn't too thin. Also when you when you flip it over to make a uh, copy of the cast if you have any dips in the cast like across the mid tarsal break what will happen is the weight of the new plaster will sink down and it'll actually change the shape of the foot and, and then it won't be a correct copy so I highly recommend getting it as flat across the top as you possibly can again I use the paintbrush to do that uh, the paintbrush and container I've been mixing in are both throwaways at this point but I'm going to hold hold on to them and I'll be able to check how fast the silicone is drying without actually touching the cast by uh, being able to check it out on uh, the brush. Uh, I used a, a GE silicone. Um, it was like 4 or $5 per, uh, per tube. I cut the end off uh, really close to the quick there. And the reason why is I get a nice big hole with it and then the silicone just dumps into the container and you're not fighting with it. So I highly recommend that. Uh, so final tips would be um, wear a mask. This stuff stinks to high heaven. Do it in your garage. You need a lot of air around it. Um, make sure you use uh, some cheesecloth on at least the second layer so that it adds structural integrity so you can pull casts out of it without ripping it apart. Um, this is now going to dry for a couple days. Um, I'll leave it under uh, heat light because uh, it's going to stay in my garage because it's way too stinky to bring inside. Um, and it's January 1st, so, um, well, at midnight tonight is January 1st. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, and so I'm uh, going to let it sit for two or three days, and then I'll come back and show you the final product when I pop the cast out of it. Um, Again, use Dawn dish soap, put a thin layer over the cast that you should be able to pop pretty much any plaster cast out of that, uh, no matter what the mix of plaster is. Um, and that's about all I can think of. Um, so stay tuned. I'll be making casts off of this mold. Uh, I'm going to give one to my brother. And so stay tuned for that. And please check out my channel. Uh, I'll be showing how to make the Bigfoot casts. Uh, so if you find one on the ground out in the wild, a uh, quick, easy way to make them, um, how I do it, and uh, how to make uh, copies of the casts um, by using this mold uh, will be in my next video or two. Okay, so here we are, day two. Overnight, I put the mold into this bag to keep the smell down and in a box in my spare bedroom upstairs where it's nice and warm. I brought it back down to the garage to open because I started to open the bag up and this just stinks to high heaven. So uh, anyways, give me just a minute here and we'll get this bag opened up. And so here's our mold day two and it's fairly flat across the top. The silicone has settled quite a bit. It's uh, still pretty mushy inside so because I can push on it and I can feel it's mushy, it's going to need to cure for a bit longer before 
I can separate the cast from the mold. Probably give it another day of, of warm air. And so it goes back in the bag and back to a warm place and we'll try to get this silicone to cure the rest of the way. To accelerate the curing process, I now have a heat lamp over the top of it. Again, it's really cold in my garage, so I'll go ahead and get the heat lamp as close as I can to it without risking a fire. And then I'm going to put some foil on one end of it to kind of capture the heat inside of it while I try to bake this thing into being solid. Here we go, the foil is now in place and it's actually holding some heat down inside the pan so we'll let this cook uh, probably overnight and by tomorrow I should have a solid mold that I can pop the cast back out of and be able to start making casts of my own. And here's what the mold looks like when it's complete. This is a mold I made previously using the exact same method. And let me flip it over here. As you can see, there's lots of detail. You can see every rock, every impression from it. It makes perfect replicas of the original cast. The beauty of using the silicone is that it, it basically goes in to every nook and cranny and makes a perfect replica of a cast. Here are a few important tips and details on Bigfoot track mold making. It's a quick, simple process to make a track mold. Remember before adding your layers of silicone to put dish soap on it first as the release agent. And I would also recommend putting the cheesecloth in the second layer so that it gives it stability when you go to move it around. Make sure the mold is completely dry before you try to detach the track from it. I'd give it a couple days under a heat lamp or near a heater and a bag so it doesn't stink to high heaven. Always wear gloves, a mask, and eye protection while handling the wet silicone. Always fill in the deeper areas of the cast, like the toes and the mid-tarsal break, with extra silicone and cheesecloth. Once the mold is dry, remove the track from it and let the mold dry an extra day or two to make sure it's completely dry before you start using it. When you're using your new mold, make sure that you always brush a thin layer of dish soap in and let it dry before adding any casting plaster. Drying time with your plaster will depend on the manufacturer. Make sure you read the instructions and let it thoroughly dry before removing it. You don't want it to crumble in your hands. I make copies of all of my casts so that if one gets broken, I have the backup copy of it. If you don't have a cast and you'd like to buy one online, I recommend buying one from a verified source like Cliff Berrickman's North American Bigfoot Center. They have an online website that you can buy one from, but more importantly, his casts have been verified by Dr. Meldrum and others to be authentic. Please support the next generation of Bigfoot hunters by liking and subscribing to our channel. Our channel will keep adding encounters and sighting videos, as well as giving tips on how to have your own encounters in the forest near you. Thank you for watching.